promise, got a change of scenery for this video and special guests behind me, C, Sage, and Steven getting ready to do some filming out here in Maui. It is really nice to always have this greenery in winter, especially coming from dry Colorado, which I love, but also love this. Anyway, welcome back to my channel, Running Wild. If you've seen a few videos, if this is your first video, welcome, glad that you're here and can start joining me on trips like this. All right, Sage, why are we here? Going for an FKT effort. Uh, from the ocean floor here down at sea level, up to the top, the highest point of Maui, on um, the island of Hawaii here, uh, Haleakala, it's a 10,000 foot climb over 18 miles, then back down again, the sea to summit FKT effort. It's part of a training buildup for my ultra marathon race on a volcanic island also in a couple months. This is your first effort in two years, isn't it? The last one was, or, um, yeah, I didn't race, uh, all 20, Tarawera. well, Tarawera was February, 2020, right before COVID really hit. And, uh, that was a tough hundred K for me. So didn't race since then. Haven't been going hard because of my health issues, the pulmonary embolism, and then, uh, you know, with our, our house burning down in Boulder, a lot of tough things. It's been a slow return over the years and yeah, it'll be a true, uh, all out effort test, long run build up, 37 miles on gnarly technical trails in this heat and humidity. Uh, so hopefully good heat training too. Who do we have joining us? We've got Steven Noza. You don't pronounce the G, right? No, you do. Oh, you do? Well, Say you told me we did it. If you ask my parents or not. Okay. So, well, how do you say it? Oh, uh, my family says Ganoza. Okay. Grammar would say Ganoza. Okay. That's good to know. Follow his channel, The Serious Runner. Awesome videos. Follow Sage too, of course. Give me something. The night is young and so Drinking electrolyte fluid. Got my pacer here now for the last three and a half miles. Climb out of the canyon. It's way hotter than I thought it would be. The trail was way more wild than I thought it would be. Super hard navigation, bushwhacking. Down low, it's crazy in the forest. Now in volcanic rock. Looking around in the sand. And the stage is about three miles from the top. Climbing super well, way ahead of the current round trip time actually on pace with the current uphill only time I don't know about that uh, I think you are I just finished pacing stage uphill for three and a half miles he was moving really well he almost dropped me on this half mile road climb that's his jam Thank you, he's such a good climber. Always really impressed with him. Glad he did not quite draw me though. I'm on island time. Trying to do a trail run. Already got in lost and off trail for somewhere between 10 to 15 minutes. So we're off to a good start. Going uphill, at least I'm on trail and it's beautiful, um, but it's steep, a little rocky. So hiking is a little bit faster, more efficient than running right now. Hopefully 
now I know how to stay on trail. It is pretty. now our last day in Hawaii. We have an evening flight sitting here with Sage, new FKT holder of Haleakua. I think I say that. Sea right. to Sky FKT round trip. Yeah. How are you feeling? A uh, little bit sore, um, but not too bad thanks to Sandy's crewing and, and pacing. And uh, yeah, got a little dehydrated. The heat and humidity here is, makes it a big challenge, but uh, didn't get any big cuts or bruises, even though I fell a couple times. Given your training, was it the result you expected? Uh, it's hard to compare because honestly, like not a ton of people have done this route. Um, but I was feeling stronger than I thought I would and being able to go 37 miles with 10,000 feet of climbing in the heat and humidity, uh, it, it went better than I thought it would actually. I, I was happy with how I felt considering uh, my limited heat training and limited, uh, I haven't got up to full volume yet in this training cycle, so it's a good step forward. And I would say running wise, you were doing some workouts and running trails, but you didn't get anything in very specific. You didn't do anything like super long climbs and descents. Um, we did a lot of rolling trails, really. I mean, it's hard to simulate coming from Colorado in the winter, so... I relied actually all, a lot on schemo fitness, getting an extra vertical from skiing uphill and, you know, wearing a lot of clothes to get hot. But then also, yeah, doing as much short climbs and higher intensity tempos and hill reps. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I've capitalized fully yet this training cycle, but that will change uh, with some new equipment, I think, and maybe doing more schemo and heat training in the coming weeks. Yeah, I was wondering if you were to say that you thought schema helped because in a weird way that was some of the more specific training. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the only way you could get in the, well, the high altitude training definitely helps because you're at 10,000 feet on the volcano here. So the altitude I had going for me, but, you know, wearing a lot of layers, skiing in the winter, you could work up a sweat and then you could get in, you know, over a thousand feet of climbing up a mountain, which is really what you need to do, those extended climbs and racking the vertical, getting the legs calloused on the downhill as well. Yeah, so one last thing, and then I'll let you stop talking. I just wanted to say, one thing I thought you did better this time than in the past was staying on top of hydration, which is funny because you didn't have crew except for like close to the halfway point, but I think you just drinking more and staying on top of electrolytes seemed to help a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I barely made it. I ran out of fluid the last five miles and, uh, in the heat of the day coming down towards the beach. It was quite humid, but I made sure to load up the Camelback vest with, you know, I had a lot of fluid. I, Sandy filled up uh, all my fluid and drinks and I was drinking a lot more electrolytes, sodium, potassium, uh, to make sure, cause I, I sweat pretty salty and I sweat pretty hot. Um, so it, it's, I have to carry that extra weight and it's, it's worth it. Thanks for saying all that. I'll let you tell the rest of the story on your own channel and tell everybody what you're up to next. So follow Sage to see what he's up to for his next race and what he's preparing for. Um, thanks, as for, for thanks for all your support too, babe. <laughs> for crewing and pacing, making it possible. Anyway, so yesterday I wanted to film more, but I ended up feeling just really bad when I woke up and tried, we did this trail run and I think it was, I ended up doing about nine miles, but it was super technical the whole time. And I had this pain that was radi radiating from like my pelvis all the way around to my back. And it was like throbbing for hours after the run. And so I was kind of put me in a bad mood. But then we went to the beach, laid down for 20 minutes and I felt better. Like my energy was better, my hip felt better. And today 
I ran and I didn't think I was gonna end up getting a workout in like I had planned but then I started running and I found this good hill and I thought you know I actually feel pretty good I'm gonna do a hill workout so I just did 10 times one minute hill repeats and it was actually the best hill repeat session I probably had in years so it's kind of funny how that happens I didn't feel my hip or my back at all it's, it's funny that's just like that's how training goes sometimes um, I think honestly just not a lot of sleep on this trip running on a lot more cement than I normally do and I think my body just needed a day to chill and those few hours on the beach really helped me out you also had to drive in the car a lot there was a lot of <laughs> two-hour car drives multiple times a day and then of course traveling here you were sitting down on the airplane for a long time too so I think the travel people it shortens your hip flexors yeah so um when I crewed for Sage, it ended up being close to like seven hours of me driving on crazy windy roads. And I'm typically just not a great traveler. So I think the time at the beach, just chilling, relaxing, was just, just what I needed to just press the reset button a little bit. So I think I am going to end this adventure video here. I hope you enjoyed following both me and Sage on this trip and Steven and as always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, keep running wild.